okay, what is 80% of 10? Um, if you're having the picture of 10 blocks in your mind right now, you go, ooh, I should uh, look at eight of them. That would represent eight of the 10 blocks would be 80%. And that's more grade school. Um, unfortunately, we don't work with, with such easy problems a lot of times in, in the middle school grades. And so let's take a look at uh, two ways that uh, hopefully you're already familiar with. If not, this is how you do it. Uh, I'm just going to call it the traditional method. It's where you take a look at what the percent is, and you're given the total amount, and, and we want to figure out a certain percentage of 10. So 80% uh, would be turned into a decimal, so 80% becomes 0 0.8, and then we multiply it by the total amount, which was 10. And 10 times 0.8 becomes 8.0. Um, so basically it's 8. What's 80% of 10? It's 8. So your answer when you do this is the answer to this question. What is 80% of 10? In this case, it's 8. Okay. Now, another way to set this up. It's a little more complicated. Um, so why would we teach you a more complicated route? Basically, if you can understand this proportional method, you don't have to memorize a bunch of little steps. Um, it's something that we can apply and tweak and change to accommodate a lot of different situations. And meanwhile, this traditional route, um, I'll have to show you kind of like a, a different setup for almost every situation we encounter. But the proportional method is more flexible. And so it might very well be worth uh, the time and effort to, to master this. How do we show the 80% in setting up a proportion? Well, we can write it as a fraction. So we take the percentage and we just put 100 underneath of it and take the percentage right off of there. Then we've got to look at uh, the number that they're giving us. Are, are we saying 80% is 10? No, we're saying we don't know what 80% is, but we're looking at a total number of 10 items or, or 10 things. So this represents the entire uh, amount, or 100%. So this 10 would be put on the same level as the 100. And when I say the same level, uh, the 100 is on the bottom. So I'm going to put the 10 on the bottom there, okay? Because that's what it represents in this situation. And if we only knew what this was on top, this unknown number, we'd be able to figure it out. Um, I know that I can multiply 10 by 10, and if you remember when we simplify a fraction, uh, what we do to the top, we do to the bottom, but also when we make equivalent fractions, if I multiply this 2 by 10, I would get 20. And then if I do the same to the, the top, 1 times 10, I would get 10. Is 10 20ths the same as 1 half? Yes. So if I could just know what number times 10 would give me 80, oh yeah, it's 8 same thing that we said it was from the method number one, uh, we would know the answer to it. However, um, there's a lot of times where you're, you're looking at uh, some very strange and complicated numbers and you're just not for sure what that is. So what we do to, to take away the guesswork is we actually um, multiply the diagonal numbers together. So 80 times 10 would be 800. And then we multiply the 100 times the variable, or x, equals 100x, because 100x means 100 times x. And then it's like a one-step equation. We can divide 100 by itself. It makes it positive 1. But then we have to divide the other side of the equation by 100 to keep the balance. And we know that the answer is 8, which, again, is the same thing that we had before. Now, this is a, a very simple uh, problem, so let's make it a little bit more difficult. So there we go. Uh, what is 43% of 516? Using our traditional method number one, we would just say turn that percentage into a decimal, and then we're going to times it by the full number. So what's 43% of 516? 221 and 88 hundredths. So 221 and 88 hundredths, um, not a, a easy number, not something that you can just kind of uh, look at and know like we did with what's 80% of 10. So the answer is 221 and 88 hundredths. Now remember, a method means that you can get to the same answer, it's just it's a, a different 
uh, way than you're used to or, or different than what you're using. So method number one is done. Let's look at method number two, setting up a proportion. I know that 43% can be written as 43 over 100. You, you took that percentage, you turned it into a fraction, and we want to set up an equal fraction on the other side. The 516, that's, that's everything. So I'm going to put that on the bottom because that represents the 100% just like it did on the left side. Um, and now I just need to find out what is 43% of 516. So uh, we're going to do the, the cross multiplication. I know uh, that 43 times 516, let's see, 43 times 516, working on the calculator right here, is 221, oh, I'm sorry, 22,188. And then 100 times the x equals 100x. And now I can divide both sides by 100. That makes a positive 1, or the x right there. And divide this by 100, and I get 221 and 88 hundredths. The same answer that we had before. Um, like I said, the proportional method is a little bit more tricky. It looks like it's more work, but here's the reality of it. If you stick with method number one, you're going to have to, to learn several different uh, rules when you encounter a different situation. Meanwhile, if you uh, learn method number two, it's just minor changes to the same thing, and you'd still be solving this, and uh, it may not be nearly as difficult as what it looks. So don't discount method number two right off. Um, let's take a look at one more problem, but let's look at a story problem instead. Okay, so Paul spent 80% of his paycheck on donuts. Uh, sounds like me. His paycheck was $122. Um, not much of a paycheck if, if uh, he's got a lot of bills, so let's just hope that he's a teenager right now. His paycheck was $120. How much did he spend on donuts? Well... Let's see here. I know traditional method number one, we need to take this percent and turn it into 0.80 or so 0.8. I then know that if this is his total paycheck and he spent 80% of it, I want to find out what is 80% of $122. So 122 will be multiplied by 0.8. Let's see, 16 carry the one would be 17. Looks like he spent $97.60. I don't know if this is over the course of a week or if he did it all at once, but that is a lot of money to be spending for donuts. And um, we'll get the exact same answer setting up a proportion right here. How do I write 80% uh, as a fraction? Just put 80 over 100. And then um, I know that the $122 is the same as the 100% because that was all the money he had in that paycheck. And now here's my X. Now here's the next thing. Guys, remember how your teachers are always on you to simplify your fraction? I know that 80 over 100 can simplify down to 4 fifths. Why does that make it easier for me? It makes my multiplication a lot more easy. Uh, 5 times X is a lot easier. Excuse me. 5 times x is uh, 5x, 4 times 122, this right here so you can see it, that becomes 8, 8, 4, so 488, and now we can divide both sides of this equation by 5 to undo the multiplication, and I know that 5 goes into 48 9 times, have 38 left over, 5 goes into 38 uh, 7 times, and you would have, um, let's see, 38, um, well, see, this is why sometimes you got to be careful not to do it in your head. Let's just go ahead and, and set it out long ways. I know what the answer is, it would be 9760, but let's just set it up like this so that we can see it. 5 goes into 48 9 times, 38 left over, so 5 goes into that 7 times, so that would be 35, and then you've got a 3, and here is where we have to have the 0 and pull it down, 5 goes into 30, 6 more times, and there's nothing left over, so 97.6, but we're dealing with money, so add another 0 to the 
the place values, and it's $97.60. Um, it's really just something you need to practice. Um, the more practice you get, pretty soon you don't have to think, and it becomes uh, kind of a, a second nature. Try to work with your groups and, and help each other understand. Don't just give each other answers, but help each other understand why you're doing what you're doing. Help them with that decision-making process.